Hi. This film deals with generalized anxiety. It is a very common condition that we often encounter during our practice. But how do we differentiate the anxiety that one experiences in everyday life from a disorder that may require treatment? Well, let's go over to our expert and get the answers from him. Hi. It is true that we feel tense or anxious under certain circumstances, but it also subsides on its own when the stimulus that causes them is over without any medication. So it is considered pathological only when the symptoms are exaggerated as compared to the stimulus that causes them, or if they persist for a long time even in the absence of the stimulus, or their severity incapacitates or interferes with the person's routine life. Now let's study the signs and symptoms to understand it better. People or patients with generalized anxiety may present with physical symptoms of stress like headache, pounding heart, restlessness, sweating in palms, insomnia, and complaints of prominent anxiety which may be expressed in local, cultural, or idiomatic expression. Now for example, in North India, a single word, ghabrahat, conveys the patient's feelings very well. If you observe the patient, he or she will probably be sitting on the edge of the chair, quite distractible and looking very tense and worried. You can make a diagnosis of generalized anxiety if multiple features of anxiety or tension are present for months. The features are mental tension like worries, feeling tense or nervous and poor concentration, physical tension like restlessness, headaches, tremors, inability to relax, or physical arousal like dizziness, sweating, pounding heart, dry mouth, and stomach pains. These features may be triggered by stressful events. The first step in the management of generalized anxiety is counseling of the patient and the family or caregiver. They need to know that anxiety does have physical and mental effects. Skills to reduce the effects of stress without using sedative medication are the most effective in relieving the symptoms. Encourage the patient to adopt relaxation methods like progressive muscular relaxation, slow deep breathing, or any other common methods that you may know. Regular physical exercise and resumption of routine activities also helps. Encourage pleasurable activities. Structured problem solving approach helps the patients manage problems and stresses better. Here, we help the patient to identify the events and situations that trigger excessive worry. Discuss with the patient what he or she does to manage such situations and reinforce the methods that are working or help him or her to find ways to handle the overwhelming situations. Finally, identify specific actions that the patient can take in the next few weeks. For example, visiting the doctor at the given time or following the exercise schedule, etc. This information sharing and counseling is of great importance in terms of building a good rapport with the patient and ensuring his or her compliance with medication if you do prescribe any. The pharmacological management is very simple. If the patient has predominant autonomic symptoms, we prescribe propranolol 40 to 80 milligrams a day in two divided doses. Start with a minimal dose of 20 milligrams and build up to a maximum required dose over two to four weeks. In other cases, busterone 15 to 60 milligrams a day in three divided doses has an advantage over benzodiazepines like diazepam as it does not have an abuse potential. Sometimes antidepressants like fluoxetine in a low dose, 10 to 20 milligrams a day, single dose after breakfast are also helpful. Buspirone and fluoxetine both may take about two to three weeks to become effective. In fact, in some cases, there may be a worsening of anxiety in the first few weeks. Use benzodiazepines for clinical relief during the initial period of 2 to 3 weeks. The choice can be diazepam, 5 to 20 milligrams at bedtime or in divided doses, or alprazolam, 0.5 milligrams to 2 milligrams per day. Hey, can I interrupt you here for a minute, please? Though he has just mentioned it, I am reminding you again about the abuse potential of benzodiazepines. Never ever use them beyond 4 to 6 weeks. We want to relieve people of their problems, not make them dependent on some medication. I hope you agree with me. Okay, so back to the expert. Thanks for that reminder. That's really important. 
So now, let's go through some of the common side effects of these medications that you must keep in mind. Propranolol may cause fatigue and tiredness, epigastric distress and sexual dysfunction. Buspirone may cause headache, excitement, tachycardia, palpitation, nervousness, dizziness, drowsiness and confusion. Benzodiazepines may lead to sedation, impaired alertness and vertigo. The patient and the family must be informed that benzodiazepines cause sedation and impaired alertness. So the person must not drive or operate heavy machinery to avoid potential accidents while under these medicines. Vice versa, these medicines are contraindicated in people who are likely to drive or operate heavy machinery. Also remember, propranolol is contraindicated in bronchial asthma. Lastly, Please do consult a psychiatrist if severe anxiety persists for more than three months even after the initiation of treatment. That's all for now. Goodbye and good luck. Hey, he left us without discussing the side effects of fluoxetine. But don't worry, I'll tell you a secret. For more information on fluoxetine, watch the film on depression in this series. I hope you found this film worthwhile. Please feel free to watch it again. For now, I will take your leave and I hope to see you around sometime, somewhere in this series.